Hello everyone and welcome to the course about the evaluation of possessions and in this video we're gonna take a look at one very interesting and instructive game but first of all let's discuss what is the evaluation because we're gonna try to evaluate the position and I hope it will help you to find the right solution in the given position. So what is evaluation and why it's so important? Basically, I think that sometimes, uh, not even sometimes, what matters in chess is the moves that you make and uh, if you are able to make the right move in every moment, you are probably the best player in the world, but uh, to find those moves you need to have a right understanding of the position of its requirements and you also often need to have a plan and uh, to find the right plan you first should evaluate the position and by saying evaluation I don't mean that computer evaluation like plus one zero 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 or minus three like black is winning white is lost or, or it's a draw maybe someone is slightly better uh, no we evaluate the position and of course it's important to know who is better and uh, what's the clear evaluation of the position is but also we need to think about uh, the reasons why someone is better and I think it's even more important more important is to know why it is so and uh, the most common algorithm of the evaluation of position uh, is to judge this position by different factors so for example we start with the material counting the amount of pawns and pieces so we can see if someone has an extra material or someone is down the material then we start thinking about the king's safety because as you know king's safety is something very important in chess because the main goal is of course to checkmate your opponent so it's definitely something you should uh, think about while evaluating the position also what's important is the placement of your pieces piece activity and uh, also pawn formation pawn weaknesses, uh, pawn structure, so if you have weak pawns, doubled pawns or past pawn, it really uh, has big impact on the evaluation of the position. And of course uh, some factors are more important than others and we usually call them even not factors, we call them advantages someone prefers imbalances the others say weaknesses and what's important to understand right now is that um, if your opponent has a weakness it's your advantage and vice versa so i will sometimes use uh, any of these words i think so don't get confused it's more or less the same thing uh, what's more important for us is to learn chess not some theoretical uh, terminology so let's go right to the position so here we have a game played between two famous uh, British grandmasters uh, with white we have Stuart Conquest and with black uh, very famous author and grandmaster John Nunn and here conquest played king g2 because obviously the king was under a check so now it's black to move and i would like you first to pause the video and try to find the right continuation for black here and then we will discuss it so i hope you find the right found the right solution but first let's discuss it uh, why it's important to evaluate the position because unfortunately a lot of club players 
a lot of amateurs they prefer to calculate variations set some traps instead of trying to plan make a plan and try to have consistent chess games so uh, they start immediately with something like bishop g4 attacking the queen so if the queen moves somewhere maybe we should add something with bishop g5 so they come with weird looking moves like for example to play h6 here with the idea to attack the queen and then to attack the queen this way and maybe it will give something but uh, look at this h6 is a very weird move here it's obvious that white will play something like queen f3 attacking the bishop also b7 pawn is hanging knight comes to e4 so maybe it's not the best idea to play h6 i've given this position to two of my students and both of them mentioned the move e4 here it's also something that comes to um, mind here just trying to open the game and uh, open the bishops but what's wrong with this e4 move and also with the move rook e8 to prepare e4 is that first before suggesting moves you really should try to evaluate the position so let's go through our algorithm the list of imbalances and here we have uh, that white has an extra exchange and it means that the move like e4 it's not the great solution here because it will lead to more exchanges in the center so it will just help white to play and also what's important to understand when you have an extra exchange or you play against it that rooks rooks really enjoy open files and here you see that there are no open files for the rooks so they can't really penetrate or attack anything and this is something that gives black some compensation for the exchange and uh, this means that it's not really something that black wants to do like opening the files for the rooks of course at some point we would like to open the diagonals for our bishops but um, not right now maybe we have something better to do uh, one of my students suggested this maneuver he thought that the rook wasn't playing on f8 at all so we should try to improve it and he suggested this weird maneuver to attack the king but what's important to understand is that the king is weak here but not from g3 it's a very well protected point so bringing the rook to g6 doesn't really give anything so we see that white has an extra exchange but black has a pair of bishops and also a pawn so kind of a compensation uh, not the greatest one but let's go to the next imbalance next advantage and we see that king safety is really uh, to the black's favor so black's king is really safe and this one is really vulnerable it's exposed and it's really weak pawn structure is also looks better for black pieces are more active for black so probably black has some advantage here and we know why we have more active pieces and we have a safer king so we have a, something to play against we have this weak king on g2 and now it's important to understand also not only to conclude that black has great chances here it's important to understand why this king is weak what exactly is weak in this position and when i ask, uh, ask such questions to my students both of them came up with a great solution here they immediately noticed that this is the weakest diagonal here for white and bringing the bishop there is something really great to do so they both 
found this bishop d7 move here, bringing the bishop to c6, and you can see how uncomfortable this king is already on g2. If white will try to play like knight e4 here, then we can just move our bishop somewhere and then push f5, opening more uh, the diagonal. And also you see that our rook on f8 now is really into the game. So probably this is something better with this bishop d7 than trying to activate that rook immediately because it had no real ways to uh, enter the game, enter the action. And now we see that once we play f5, the rook will be really strong. So now all of our pieces are happy. After king f1, John Nunn once again found a weak point in, black's, in white's position. And you also can try to pause the video and find the move that he played. And this move was queen d7, aiming to h3. Probably it's not the best move, but it's pretty logical. So after king g1, now he once again played a really in a brilliant way here. You also can try to find it if you want. And he played e4 now, which is quite a great move. So he wants to open his bishop on f6. And I was talking like e4 is not something we want to do, we want to do, but look, it was this position and e4 wouldn't just give us anything here. But now e4 opens our other bishop coming to d4 and this king will be really unsafe on g1. No ways to run. If you take with a knight, then just check or taking the pawn first or goes there and check. But the main idea is that then we go f5 and we once again open the diagonal. And if he goes like king f1, we once again have this check now and then f5 is coming and black is absolutely winning here. So de looks like now the diagonal is closed, but then we once again play check and this f5 is coming. So you see that our bishops are just monsters here and white is really uncomfortable. And I really enjoyed also this moment. Like John Nunn played here another great move. So you can try to find it. And he played b7, b5. Such a brilliant solution, I think. Like b4 is coming and then you take on e4 without any exchanges. Uh, taking on e4 immediately would just spoil the advantage, I think. So b5 was just a great move. And now we can just see how the game continued. Nothing really important here anymore for us. So he just found a way to attack the king. And after queen d3 check, for by obvious reasons, white resigned here. So what's great about this game is that before starting to calculate and trying to find some moves, like if you try to calculate, you think about bishop g4, e4, c4, h6, I don't know, rook e8, something like this. Before that, you should really try to evaluate the position and go a bit deep into the position to understand it, to see what's really important here. And this way you can came up, come up with something something so brilliant like bishop d7 here, like John Nunn did in this game. And I really like this game because of that. And I hope you also liked it. So what we learn here is that uh, we should try to use some list of advantages and evaluate the position by using them and then we want to find something really important uh, among the those advantages and here we see that the king is really vulnerable and we start playing against the king and we start uh, searching for a move that would use 
this advantage. Not something uh, against pawn structure, let's say, or trying to improve one of our pieces just in a random way. Like, let's say the rook uh, seemingly looks better placed on d8, but it doesn't attack the king anyhow. On the other hand, on f8, once f5 is played, the rook really supports the attack. So we just play bishop d7 and the rook uh, turns out to be well placed on f8, supporting some action there. I hope you liked it, I hope you enjoyed it, and let me remind you once again that we want to think about the possession first and then try to calculate, and the evaluating process consists some list of imbalances, let's say. So it's the king's safety, it's material advantage, also we have piece placement and uh, pawn structure. And in the next videos we will try to go through all of these imbalances and see how you can use them separately. And then we will try to uh, learn how to find the the best one to play against i mean some imbalances are usually more important than others in the game so we will try to learn how to find the most important ones but to do th so first we should learn about any of them separately and uh, and yes I hope you will enjoy it and see you in the next videos. Bye.